welcome back everyone. I know there was a lot of new information to take in last lesson, so I hope you all managed to get to grips with the idea of perpendicular and non-perpendicular lines. Right. Today we're going to be continuing with our learning about different types of lines, and I want you to bear that in mind as we go through our in focus today. The question for today is what do you notice about the railway track? Now, you could, if you felt so inclined, write down 101 things about the track, like what materials it is made from, or the colours of the different parts. But let's not focus, excuse the pun, on that today. Let's focus instead on the lines that we can see make up this track. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking to your parents, pets and partners, or just making some notes. What do you notice about the lines on this train track? So, let's just check back in then. I'd like to hear some of your observations. Uh, let's start with Lexi. What did you notice? Okay, so you saw that some lines were facing in one direction and the others were facing in a different direction. That's a good observation to start us off. So we're looking at these lines here facing in this direction. I'll just get my pen ready. And these lines here facing in this direction. Okay. So that's a good observation to start us off. To be more specific, we could give our lines names. Let's say that our first rail here is AB. So we talked about that last lesson. We're going from point A to point B, and we often start at the earliest place we can in the alphabet. So this line would be AB. And our second rail we can call CD. So that would be the line CD. Then our first sleeper here, which is the ones going across, we could call EF, like so. And we could continue down through all the sleepers if we wanted to. I'm not going to go that far today. We don't really need to. We've labelled our um, rails going this way and our sleeper going that way. Uh, so what can we say about these lines now that we have given them names we can be a bit more specific um dom what can we say about the lines a b and e f excellent you've been listening we can say that they are perpendicular because they meet at a right angle look there We've got a nice right angle between those lines, so they are perpendicular. What can we say then about the lines A, B and C, D? Are they perpendicular, Ruby? No. Good. In fact, these lines don't meet at all. Do you think if they kept going for miles and miles, like this way, just like their actual train tracks, that these lines would ever meet. So the lines AB and CD do not meet and could not meet, no matter how long they were. This means that they are parallel. Lines that cannot meet because they are equally spaced out from top to bottom are called parallel lines. If we look at example number two here, we can see that the lines EF and GH are in fact parallel lines. How do we know? Because they could never meet exactly. They are equally spaced out from top to bottom. And in the third example, We can see that LM and NO are, in fact, parallel. They are equally spaced out from the bottom to the top. Okay, ON, or NO, sorry, is actually a bit shorter than LM, but they are still parallel. They are always equally spaced out that distance between them. Uh, so they will never meet. But the lines PQ and our s are not parallel to each other 
If we were to carry them on, can you predict where they would meet? So let's do it. So this line will carry on roughly in this direction, like so. And this line will carry on in this direction, like so. So they are not parallel. They would eventually meet if we carried them on. So let's start a guided practice on question two again today. So we want to know which pairs of lines are parallel, which sides of the shapes are parallel, and which letters have parallel lines, just like yesterday. But we were doing it with perpendicular lines yesterday. Today we're doing it with parallel lines, equally spaced out lines that will never meet each other. Let's have a go at the first one together then. Let me get my pen ready. Let's start with the line AB, which is this line here. AB. Is this line parallel to any other lines? No. It's already touching the lines CD and EF, so we know it can't be parallel to those and would eventually touch the line GH if we were con to continue both of them. This line here would eventually meet this line here around about there, I would say. Uh, but we can see that the lines EF and GH are parallel because they would never meet. They are equally spaced out all the way along. If we carried them on, they would still never meet. Now let's look at the first of these shapes here. This shape is a square. Can you spot any parallel lines? I'm going to start us off. AB yeah, is parallel to CD. These lines could never meet. And AD is parallel to BC. So we can say that the square has two sets. Let's do the different colours. This one set, A, B and D, C. And A, D and B, C. So it's got two sets, the red set and the blue set, of parallel lines. Now I want you to try the next three shapes here. Which sides are parallel? So, starting with the rectangle, it's going to be exactly the same as the square. The lines EF here and HG are in fact parallel. And the lines EH and FG are also parallel. With the rhombus here, we've got the line KN and the line LM are parallel, they will never meet, and the line KL and NM, those lines are also parallel. Now, our final shape, which is a trapezius, or trapezium, uh, let's have a look, we've got the line PS here, and the line QR, well, that's a bit of an issue because if we were to continue these lines on do, 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 and this line on, uh oh, so our lines have met at this angle here. So we cannot call those parallel lines. However, if we look at the, uh, the lines PQ and SR, these lines are parallel because they're equally distanced the whole way through. Even though one is shorter than the other, they are still parallel. They would never, ever meet, no matter how long they were. Okay, uh, let's look at question four here. Which letters have parallel lines? M has not got any parallel lines. A, these lines are already meeting, and this one hasn't got another line to meet. 
T, we know already that these lines are perpendicular because they meet at a right angle. Now, I can see in H, we've got this line and this line are parallel. These two lines would never meet. These three lines on E are all parallel. They would never meet. Uh, we've got MAT again. I is only one line, so it can't have a, a parallel line because there's only one line. This is a curved line and only one line, and this is also a curved line and only one line, even though it's wiggly. Okay, now let's have a look at the worksheet. Okay, so exactly the same sort of idea as yesterday. We're going to start by uh, identifying the parallel lines. Now, let's have a go at A. Are these lines parallel, or will they eventually meet? I'm going to predict that they will actually meet about here. Let's carry this one on. Do, do, and carry this one on. Yeah, roughly around that point. Those lines will meet, so they are not parallel. These two lines have already met at a right angle, so they're not parallel. What are they? Perpendicular. Fantastic. Well remembered from last lesson. Okay, see here? I'm just going to draw the lines between. And I can see that these two lines are parallel because they are equally spaced out. D again meets at a right angle. They're trying to trick us here with that perpendicular lines from yesterday. E again, these lines meet at a right angle. So they are not parallel. They are perpendicular. And F, I'm just going to tilt my head here. If these lines were to continue, they would never meet. So they must be parallel. OK, now have a go at the next few worksheets independently, and I'll see you in a minute uh, to have a go at looking through your answers. OK, so we've done this one already together. C and F are parallel lines. Now, number two, name the pairs of lines that are parallel. So we've got E, F here, this line E, F and G, H are parallel lines. They will never meet. E, F is parallel to G, H. Um, and another drawing here. Uh, P, Q, where's that one? P, Q, so this one, is parallel to T, U. These lines will never meet. And the line R, S here is parallel to the line V, E. Number three, name the sides that are parallel in each shape. The line AB is parallel to the line DC. This is similar to the one we did in our guided practice. And the line AD here is parallel to the line BC. Oh, lots of parallel lines in this one. PQ, let's start with that one, is parallel to TS. Uh, which one next? UT. This one is parallel to QR. Oh, I should do that in a different colour. Let's rub that one out. Okay. So we've got UT here. It's parallel to QR. I wonder if you can spot the last one before we get there. And we've got, let's use green, the line PU. It's parallel to the line RS. Okay. Finally then, look at the letters below. We've got examination. No parallel lines. X, A, M, T and O. One pair of parallel lines. Okay, our parallel lines are here in the letter I. So that's one. And our parallel here, lines are here in the letter N. So I and N have one pair of parallel lines. More than one pair of parallel lines. Well, E here has got a set of three parallel lines. So that's a pair and that's a pair. So it's got two pairs of parallel lines. Oh, and also that and that one are a pair. OK, we've come to the end of our worksheet. We've come to the end of our learning today. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're looking forward to next lesson. 
where we will in fact be talking about vertical and horizontal 